Hello everybody, welcome back Friday Night Live. Cheers. Hope you all had a good week. I hope some of you are warming up. It looks like temperatures are absolutely crazy in the Northeast. So best, uh, best of luck with that. It is just me this evening. Nicole taking care of our oldest, very old, very old kitty. So she's out tonight, but she's having just as much fun as the rest of us, I'm sure. But uh, this was the rig I had on the bench last week, the UC Fab Carnivore chassis. And last week I did a little bit of freshening up with some new shocks. We built some Incision S8Es, kind of fully, fully done up and dropped them on here. Took out some of the old parts that were detailing this thing up that I liked the look of, but they needed freshened up. They were uh, old prints off old printers that didn't look as good um, or were like resin prints that were getting old and brittle, you know, so things that can all be updated and replaced and whatnot, you know, fuel cells, same thing. So all of that is my plan to update as we go. Uh, but the one thing, and I know you guys kind of hate it when I get actual work done on here, but uh, the one thing that was brought up last week that I was just like, I, I actually want to do that is that this interior was out of an old HPI. It was a C1 Apache and they have not been, <laughs> thanks Brian Sherwood, extra kiss for kitty. <laughs> yes, she, you know, We've known she's been getting quite old for quite some time. And, you know, just kind of, we all, we all have to go through it. Pets are awesome. There's just some times that are tougher than others. So take the good with the bad. But I was talking about, this is an interior off an old HPI, C1 Apache it was called. And uh, this, I bet I had this interior um, in probably three or more, four builds before it finally ended up in this one. And each time it just kept getting a little narrower and a little narrower until we ended up with just what remains here. But it was like, it's a little bit larger than a bomber interior, like the figure size, a little bit larger. It just felt like it fit well. Um, and I was just thinking, wondering, what would happen if I tried to actually turn this into a file that was usable for me to uh, make a make a 3D printed buck so that I could make a more full width interior that I could modify or whatever and um, and have a thing that I could vacuum form over. So I think that's what I'm gonna try and do a little bit of tonight um, is I'm gonna scan it and then throw it in the cat a little bit. I'll try not to bore the hell out of you. It might just be what's kind of on while I try and answer as many questions as possible. Um, so the nice thing about it is, is that if I get this done in a way that I can actually do a little bit of modifying, I can lower him down a little bit to where it needs to be, or it looks a little bit better. You know, this car in reality, these, this type of buggy, these are very small cages. You put two people in these cars in the full size world, you're like shoulder to shoulder. So, you know, it's not like a big ultra four car even, which can still be tiny or, you know, tight. Uh, but like, that's the thing is that it needs to, it needs to have this little bigger figure. Otherwise it just looks like this massive, like super roomy interior uh, rolling down the street. So. Uh, what is the front clip from? Uh, that was one that we made a mold from and then vacuum formed ourselves as well. It was initially a Proline Desert Rat uh, body that the fenders were cut off, the center section was narrowed, and then the, the fenders were brought in and screwed on. And we took that and made a plaster mold from it basically, transferred from uh, clay to plaster to Bondo, and then vacuum formed my own. So I've got a little vacuum former here and it makes things pretty handy. So anyway, that's about what I'm going to try and get accomplished tonight while still just answering and bullshitting about random questions. But yeah, this interior is so wild how like there's just, I don't know, like if I 
drilled tiny little holes or for some reason it just kind of wore through in a way that made perfect little holes in it it's it's crazy i uh i did let's see if this works oh well that's that can i turn this one is it, oh, it's still you guys remember that i have an overhead camera that i n never use because it so rarely works but you can see the uh you can see like the wear off of the paint from the underside where it's got super thin in those spots but then also up in that front area right up in there there's little tiny holes that have come in it um <laughs> it's it's so great and the camera freezes in oh that's exactly that's exactly true <laughs> so anyway we're gonna see we're gonna pull his head off like pd the parakeet um and then uh we'll sell them to a well hey we'll sell it to blind guy rc huh see how that worked bringing it back there's the joke um missed a super chat dang it thank you as well <laughs> big jim rc ebay return fund yep that is still happening i still uh it still appears at this point that there I could be getting scammed. We shall we shall see. We'll find out. <laughs> so that's uh yet to be determined, but at this point I'm not holding my breath to see if I will ever get my ever get my funds from that. Am I getting the RC4 wheel drive mystery box, the new one? <laughs> we I don't know. I don't know. I'm very torn. Blind guy RC, thank you. Hey man, my Origin Phoenix is close to, is close. Foraging. Kind of makes sense. Foraging, but foraging and for, forged. <laughs> I like it. I saw your photo that you posted earlier today, actually. Um, wasn't that butthole local? Yeah. Yeah. Not local to SAC, but local to the area. I don't know. I'm not... Maybe it was a mistake still. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to refrain from name calling until like things get cleared up. Maybe it was a misunderstanding. I just didn't, didn't uh, realize what it looked like on the credit card statement. So, um, you didn't send the auction truck out before payment, right? Uh, well, no. But the thing is, is that how that works is that eBay holds the funds. I, I don't even have the funds from the other things yet. eBay still holds on to that stuff. Like I don't get it. the funds don't clear up until like February 18th. So, which I was totally prepared for. Like the, eBay it off, just wait. You know, I don't I don't sell things on eBay often, so I don't have that like I guess however long it takes before they get it, whatever. And plan on it either way. I don't have any of the money and uh, I will get even less of it than when it's sold. whatever. I could, there's a million things I could be pissed about every day and I'm, I don't need another one. So I'll, I let it go. Um, so what we're doing tonight is our can of fire dry shampoo. We're going to spray our interior shape we're going to scan it and there's a couple of options i can hand scan or i can tabletop it's or you know hand scan moves it around or there's the other one where you can just put it on it and let it spin but i don't think i'm going to do that so you know that's uh that's the plan Ed Camino, thank you, sir. Ha <laughs> my small donation to help too. <laughs> TGIF too. I still need to get you a list of parts. I know, I know, but it's it's in there. I, I left your messages unread so I could get back to it. RC4 will drive claiming a 25% chance of a 118th or 124th scale in each of the mystery boxes and no two mystery boxes are alike. I saw that in their new uh, their new claims. I don't know that I would be all that happy if I got one of their 124 scale anyway, because they'll 
for one, those things, they were trying to blow them out for six, give them away for $69 to, because they're the worst 124 scale that's almost ever been released. Um, the 118 scale is probably not as bad. Um, I know that they're still pretty underpowered. So it's like, even if you win, do you win? I don't know. I don't know if I need to buy another one. I think I sent Matt a message like, so are we doing this? <laughs> I don't think we ever made a decision. When are you going to start vacuum forming bomber interiors? You can still buy them. I don't need to do something that you can already buy. I'm only interested in doing it if I can't buy it. I don't want to go through doing all the work um, when I could just <laughs> buy the stuff. But yeah. Are they sold out? Oh, bomber interiors are sold out. Oh, interesting. Um, hmm. Hmm. So anyway, I'm going to get onto this a little bit. I'll keep reading comments and things like that as we go and turn this into something. But Alex Rojo, thank you, sir. Uh, Josh bought them all, all the bomber interiors. Right? I still do have a couple of new ones. So this stuff is just, it smell. Go Eagles. Ooh. Actually, I don't really care about football that much. So, <laughs> the purpose of the dry shampoo is supposed to be to turn it more of a white finish, but for some reason, I think that. I think maybe all of the shampoo part is gone and I've just got the propellant because I'm not getting any of the <laughs> other part of it. I've got more. There we go. That worked. <laughs> I think this one's shot. Open a window, nerd. <laughs> Hobby room. Thank you very much. Much appreciated. Um, you know, I think I like the fumes. Phoenix. Ladies are spraying this in their hair. Like, it can't be that bad for you. Can it? <laughs> Is the rift interior the same as the bottom? No, the rift interior is different. Different by quite a bit. Um, it's got a big hole in the middle and it's got different shaping. Not quite as, not quite as universal. So. Sorry if the fan is loud. Hopefully my noise canceling helps take that out. Um, let's prop this sucker up. Like that. Light a match, I dare you. <laughs> what comp tire do I recommend? Right now I'm using uh, VXT2s on pretty much pretty much everything, like comp wise, except C1, which I'm using the new Falcon C1s from Vanquish as well. Um, I was running Hyrax before. I really like the Hyrax, but I'm really liking our Falcons. So I'm running those. They they seem to be holding doing what I wanted my previous ones to do. So, um, I'm going to switch over to this. So this is what I'm seeing on my screen. James Calvin, thank you as well. Much appreciated. Uh, so, uh, are the Falcons on last year's C1? They currently are on the purple wheels, but they could be moved over to the other wheels. Chris, if you would prefer. Um, we got to reconnect. It's doing a little flashy thing. There we go. Um, the front bumper mount you designed uh, for the Rock Pirates flat rail is awesome. Hey, good deal. How many wiggle wiggle wiggles do you think you'll do in Colorado? 
Ooh, I'm super excited for Colorado. I would be working on the C1 tonight if we had unveiled our plans yet. But, alas, we have not. So, um, I have zero comp experience. So, whatever you think. I mean, either, like I said, the other one's already got really good foam set up in it and everything. So, let's see what we got here. Doing... Our preview, seeing what we got. So now we're actually scanning. Getting the arms and the dead up. Oh, lost it for a second. Come on back. Be a little dark in there. So now we're getting the back of the seat. Steering wheel. I'm going to stop that scan. I need to get the other side, but I can do it in multiple scans. Uh, Josh, how's that VFD mount holding up? Printed it today out of PETG, wondering how uh, it's going. I mean, honestly, you don't even really need it, uh, but it's fine. Um, how can you tell it's getting a good scan? Basically, what it's what you see on the screen is what it's capturing. So I just try and see that I'm getting areas filled in. Um, you know, and you can see definition there. Uh, you can tell it's a little light on the back there based on the density of dot. Like if you zoom in, these are all just dots. There's no surfaces. So as you zoom out, that's when you can start to see the surfaces put together. So that we're going to scan again. Oh, we got to save it. So, Ooh, it's already starting. And what's the cost of a scanner like this? They're like around like 700 bucks. Um, there's some that are a little cheaper. There's some that are a lot more. This one for RC size parts, I'm super happy with. Um, and it's a bit of an art to use it, but I, uh, I have got pretty comfortable with it and I really enjoy using it now. Oh, lost some tracking. Getting the windshield again, or windshield, steering wheel. Okay, get the Einstar best on the one. So the Einstar is a great one as well. They, uh, but it seems like the Einstar has more trouble with small parts. Um, Cause, and it's, it's around, God, I think it's around two or three times the cost um, and takes a lot more hardware. But for small parts, it seems to do, it seems to struggle a little bit. So, you know, I definitely looked into the Einstar. It was super interesting. Uh, all right. We are going to unplug that so you don't have to listen to that fan. Um, 900 bucks is all that Einstar was at? Okay. Yeah, I knew the PC. I thought the Einstar was a little bit more than that. But anyway, now we have two two scans and they're not going to be aligned so we need to you know do that part of it um oops i think i have to process both of these before it will let me do the 
So, oh, STL Sunday's back. How else are you going to 3D print Matt's Volvo? So I, I'm super excited to get into, uh, into our class one projects, but whew, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a thing. Ah, did it do it? Halfway decent. Oh, no, remove the ground. Oh yeah, oh, sorry. This is a bit of like the processing side of things. So just selecting like what the ground things were. There you go. Next. Now it tries to align. Um, <laughs> Phoenix Trail Street. Can you scan your head next and print it? You, I could, and people do. Like people, uh, oh, it's asking, was it a reasonable attempt? Uh, unless maybe I just completely missed this side, which is totally possible. We'll say that it is. We'll see what it does now. Um, so Matt wants to know if he can braise the scout cage on a T-Rex. Uh, sure, yeah. I mean, doing that type of thing is is for sure a thing. Um, T-Rex 4, steel frame rail still, it's easy to, or a great place to just start going right on to. Um, uh, <laughs> I, I also picked up on Josh reading the comment on the Volvo and going straight to what the C1 will be. The C1 is not a Volvo. I 100% promise it is not a Volvo. <laughs> but it's just, I'm just like, it would be, I know what you mean by like 3D printing and going from there. So. Have you ever tried 3D scanning with the iPhone and its LiDAR capabilities? Just curious. Uh, yes, I have. Um, before I bought this, I was working on a project with a friend of mine uh, who owns a, an audio shop. His name's Bobby Gately. So he owns Gately Audio, which is here locally. And we 3D scanned the interior of a 59 Impala to like start building some like kick panels and some uh, custom like center console and all this. And it's not bad it's like half you know it says half me half millimeter accuracy it's probably a little bit more like one to three millimeter accuracy depending on what you're doing so uh let's see what it looks like so we missed a lot on that side this side looks looks good i, I could almost take and just cut it down the middle and mirror it too, right? If I wanted to, which would be a, a reasonable approach. You can see the, you see that like triangle right there on there? That's the tech sticker from my Axial Fest. <laughs> That's what that raised area is. <laughs> kind of funny. Um, the RC Underdog, thank you, sir. Much appreciated. A friend converted an MRI file into an STL so I could 3D print their brain. What? Oh, that's a, that is an interesting idea. I guess you could just because like you, it's individual layers already, which is basically an STL. You know, so you can just take that and you just give each layer, you know, the, the distance between them, I, I assume. And you can basically just take and create each of those and call the, the, oh, that's pretty wild. <laughs> Josh Brink Holmes, an MRI machine. <laughs> Giant magnets. <laughs> so. Anyway, uh, back to this. So what I have to decide is, is this side good enough that I can take or I'm, ex it's acceptable and, uh, you know, or should I redo it to make some of this, you know, get some of these areas better. And I think I missed so much 
that I almost want to just do it again once. <laughs> they scanned my cat. <laughs> Um, can you easily go in and modify it? Like, yes and no. Like, all, both answers are correct and incorrect. So I'm going to delete. I didn't really need to delete all of that scan data. I could have just amended it. But the first scan had kind of like a, a double layering going on that I didn't love. So I figure... We'll just start over anyway. Um, there we go. Rescan, mount the scanner on the new gimbal. I don't think that that's necessary, but it's kind of a fun idea at the very least. So like, I mean, we might as well. It's, I mean, if nothing else, there's no reason to be as productive as normal. What else is Josh? <laughs> <laughs> So the only problem is that we, of course, do have a cable on this, which is less than ideal. But in the end, this is just a camera, so. All right. Let's see, can we make it work? I feel like if I, I've got multiple areas for adjustment. This goes front to back. This has got some front to back as well. I can go the other way, but got to flip that around. This is a ridiculous thing and completely unnecessary, but <laughs> why not? So now we've got to make it so that it's ooh, it's very heavy that way. So unlock, slide that. Still very heavy in that direction. Slide it back. I don't know that. That's pretty close. It might not be completely pissed off at me. Is the scanner real fragile? Um, I mean, I haven't broke it yet. And I'm kind of a ham-fisted individual. So, unlock all our axes. Oh. So it's way, oh man, I'm almost out of adjustment that way too. But if I, should be okay there. <laughs> this is ridiculous. <laughs> okay. So I think it was triple tap the trigger. That doesn't really help me, does it? Kinda does. Can still do. 
Let's try it. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Okay. <laughs> Josh preparing to film for his only files. <laughs> See what you did there. <laughs> no, Nicole means I can totally have three cookies. You don't really need to see what I'm scanning now. Oh, shoot. Nope, oh, stop. Stop, stop. I forgot. In hand scan mode, it needs to be vertical. But, luckily, mode, no. What was that? Don't want. Okay, hold. There's a. There's a way to put it in like landscape mode, and I've just never done it. Um. Not that. Not that. I don't know how to use this very well. Double tap the M button. That's how mine works anyway. Let me see if I get out of it. Nothing. But I have an app. <laughs> Four clicks and then two. F I feel like you're trolling me at this point. Where's the manual? I don't know. This is a tear. I should. I could be done with this. Uh, do you ever think you'd have foreign people <laughs> trying to work out a gimbal? <laughs> have you ever heard of instructions? Listen, Moose Jaw. Um, does this have it? No. Mm. I just want to turn it. Testing. This is all ridiculous. Um, I'm not going to be able to figure this out <laughs> three hours later. <laughs> um, yeah. I'm going to do this by hand. Well, the, or no. This is not going to work. <laughs> You'd be done by now if you used your biological gimbal. That's exactly what I was thinking. And now I'm going to have to go back and readjust for my camera. All because of the peer pressure of this. Um, so, anyway. Uh, why not move the object rather than like on a turntable. So it, it can tell like your motion of the camera. So it expects to see the movement of the, I've done this before and that does work, but not super reliable. So it, it's, it's kind of a pain. Um, anyway, long story, not so long. I'm going to put you back over to this version so you can see me struggle again. So let's see. Two, one, zero. So we're going to get a better look at this side. We're going to stay a little bit further back. We'll go right over top of it to try and get a better. Up, down. Around the. I'm going to see if I can get it all in one shot because that's ideal. Just got to do scanner yoga.
I think we got that one. Psh, look at that. Yes. Um, so you don't, so you don't use Jobs. Uh, what software is this? This is the software that comes with the scanner. Um, it's called CR Studio. Um, oh boy. That looks much better. Much, much better. I think we can probably work with this. Let's do a process. Fill holes is, we're going to turn that off. I don't want that on, I don't think. I think, though, that we've got a pretty decent looking scan with this one. Unplugging so you guys don't have to listen to that stupid fan. Grabbing the keyboard. Um, and we're going to... Calculate the ground, which actually, I'm just going to skip it. I don't need to calculate it. Uh, fill holes is always a good idea. <laughs> what are we working on? We're working on an interior out of an old build of mine that I uh, don't, uh, you can't buy anymore because it was out of an old HPI. And I'd like to be able to take the base of it and repair it and, and change it, make a it more of a solid piece that would fill the interior that I have so that I can 3D print a buck and then vacuum form my own versions. So, oh, exit. Look at that scan. That is what I would call very reasonable. We did a good job. So from here now, we can do a little bit of, um, of cleanup to get rid of some of this other like crap that's around here. We'll go into the editor mode that's right there. And then we're going to pan around a little bit. We're going to grab our selection mode at the top. Oh, I forgot you have to hold control and select that way. And then we can go over here and hit delete selection. And we just know that all of this stuff over here is, ah, damn it. Like I said, I always forget to hold control, hold control. We know that all this down here was junk from the cell block that it was resting on. So we'll just keep selecting around. I could have deleted that already, but got all of that and then hit delete. I don't know what these little stragglers are up here. Get rid of that too. Delete selection. And now we've got pretty much just our interior. That's about it. So um, now we're going to, I mean, I could simplify smooth. If I hit fill holes, what will it do? Since this isn't a manifold part, like the, it, it's not gonna be able to calculate a bottom. Um, I don't know that it will. I don't know that it will be able to determine anything up. Oh, we got a couple more stragglers. Let's get rid of those first. Um, oh, it's not gonna, they're gonna close. Better hit save just to make sure that uh, we don't lose that just in case. Uh, can you speak to a decent computer configuration, i.e. in this type of program, a memory hog, uh, if one were designed? So 
This is like my studio computer and it is not a, a big ball and PC of any kind. This is actually a pretty affordable PC to build. So uh, you can kind of see here, uh, RAM usage. I do, I am heavy on RAM right now, a little over 60%, but I also have uh, my program here, which is my OBS or the open broadcaster software. Um, so I've got that running. I've got YouTube windows running and my you know, capture cards, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so you know, Chrome is actually taking up a good bit of it. And if I go to my system specs, I've got, this is just a Ryzen 5 2600, 2060 KO graphics card. And I think I've got 16 gig of RAM in here. I think these are each four gig sticks. Yeah, four gig sticks. So this is pretty, this is a pretty basic PC. And I, I do most of my 3D modeling and stuff in here. Uh, like I have my editing PC, which is a lot more powerful, but it's just, I don't, it's not crazy in here. So this is all I've, I've got. That's, this is a pretty, I mean, mid to, to low grade as far as like, you can go buy something that's better than this PC now for probably, I don't know, 800 bucks, something like that. So, you know, if that makes you, if that gives you any, uh, you don't need to spend a ton and you can get it done. I could go use my, my big editing PC with a lot more horsepower um, and better graphics card and all that, but this doesn't really even bog down. Um, how many gig of, does my editing laptop have? Well, my editing PC out there, I've got 64 gig in. Um, and then my laptop that I use on occasion is an Apple. So, and it's a big, crazy specced out MacBook Pro. So the, uh, if you're, if you're doing editing or graphics work or video gaming, like 16 gig is, is kind of like where I would tell you to go. You don't, you don't need more than that, but it's nice to have. So, but 16 gig, if you can get it, that's, that's a good place to start. So anyway, this was a super solid scan. I'm super happy with that. And we are going to export it. So I don't use this enough. We're, we don't need to do any of the mapping. So I think it's just, I always forget. Why do I not have? Why can't I not figure it? I've already processed everything. I don't need to process again. No, that's because it's just in the regular export menu. Jeez. Uh, so we'll keep it in Apache. Uh, you just answered a question. I've been researching for like three days nonstop. <laughs> no problem. So yeah, there you go. An R9 5900X, 3080 FV Founders Edition, very nice. 32 gig DDR4 30, with XMP enabled. That's, yeah, that's way more than anything that I'm using in here. My, my editing PC is probably around, but not a 3080. I still have a 20 series graphics card in there. So we're done with this guy. We can close that out. I'm over here with an M1 Mac. My, uh, my Mac, is my Mac an M1 or an M2? I think I have an M1. My MacBook Pro is an M1 Ultra. I think we're done with that. Save yes. All right here. So we can go file, upload, select our file for this and 3D scans. There we go. Upload. We'll see what this looks like. And we'll switch back to normal for a minute. I noticed, you know, we were having a hard time scanning the back of this interior, but you can see like, I'm actually, it looks better in the camera here, but this I is, there's almost no spray on that. That's almost black. So that's why I was having such a hard time. Same on this side of the arm. So anyway, there you go. 
<laughs> then there's Alex. I have a Xeon with 128 gigs of ECC. EC, what is ECC? Air checking? Air, what does ECC stand for? I can't remember. It's like air checking something or air something something. Nerds speak. <laughs> <laughs> Just check your IG real quick. I don't um oh. <laughs> so yes. Uh da, 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 da. Just like how you <laughs> air correction code. Ah, I knew it was something error. Air Niner, <laughs> but anyway, this is still importing our mesh. And I'll show you how I deal with like the early steps of that part of it. Um, mesh stuff is not something I'm good at. So I'm learning a lot because I keep trying and pushing and trying to like figure it out and go a little bit further, but um, but you know, you just gotta keep trying to learn something. Can I get a niner in there? Yes, you're all very welcome. But hopefully, this is the this has it, what is it? it's the giving tree of interiors. Started as a bit and just kept going down until it served its final purpose when <laughs> it just had to live this long and now it can, maybe it will make it to the dumpster. I don't know. The, the dumpster is what houses so many of those like last little pieces of builds and special events. Like, you know what? If it makes it to the dumpster, it's a pretty big day. <laughs> Sir Axel. <laughs> All right, we are complete. So close. So we're just in a blank file here. Insert draw. Oh yeah, I gotta say this. We're gonna do G interior and 3D scans. Is that the one? Is that my mesh? I think it is. Yeah. What would jo what oh Josh's wall of shame look like anyway? <laughs> ah crap. Actually, I had to cancel. I should delete that Are you sure yes because I'm gonna I'm gonna do one other step that makes this a lot easier <laughs> and that is using mesh mixer to get things like in the right place and all that just a lot faster um, So this is just a freebie Autodesk thing, but we can take and move our, oh, I rarely, I rarely use this except for scans. So I need to transform. That's what it is. And it's while auto or while fusion can do this, it just isn't as smooth at it. Except, and then transform again. Oh, I wish that it re... Oh, don't want to scale it. I think there's a move to ground. I can't remember. Someone who's good at this is probably just spinning in their Uh, oh, wait, is it local? That's what I wanted. Ha! See? I'm not very good at some of these programs, but 
I just have to be good enough to get things done slightly faster than I would have myself. And the easy, so you can see we're pretty close because it's all disappearing about the same time. It looks like we're front to back off a little bit. So we'll give it a give it a little bit of a tweak there. Let's see how that looks. About the exact same, but either way, good enough. Uh, Chris Gaskin, I'm getting the shirts tomorrow. Yeah, good deal, Chris. I knew you were close, so I figured it would be a pretty, uh, pretty quick one to get to you. All right, so that's all I do. And now I can export that again, just back over top of the original. And then I don't have to, uh, when I bring it into Fusion, it'll just be about where I want it to. Just tuning in and glad it's not a custom foam interior. <laughs> no, we even started with a 3D scan. All right, so that should be done. Do I need to save? No. Are you a save everything person? Like you just like, you would save that file or are you a get rid of it type of person? I like, unless I absolutely think I need to, like I need to have that again, then I'm just like, don't save it, don't save it. Uh, I need a computer that can run BeamNG and not call, see that's the, that's the one that really takes up some power is BeamNG. <laughs> I definitely get that. All right. Uh, I tried to play Beam and G and my PC caught fire. <laughs> yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's a thirsty program. I somehow ended up multiple saves of the same. Yeah. I said, <laughs> that's, I'm just, I just get rid of, I was like, I can, if it was fast enough, I'll just, I'll just redo it. If unused files disappearing faster than Matt's, <laughs> you know, otherwise, yeah, you just end up with, and I do, I need a NAS server here that I, I need that badly. And one day I'll get that accomplished. So import that body hit okay and now there is our we went from our well that's what i was after that hey, gunner nissen thank you sir hello all tonight's code hashtag foam all the interiors <laughs> so we went from this lexan interior to our our new guy so will this be flex seal worthy ooh so what i should do i should get this kind of done and then we can uh i wonder how i could get this so that you guys could actually like this would be useful to you guys. First thing we can do is we can go into the mesh and you can do a uh, repair, see if it finds any holes, S close holes, do a preview. This can sometimes get a little taxing, but we'll see what it does. It's thinking right now. I'm super interested to see how you design Infusion. I'm mediocre at it best. I am very mediocre at um, at this type of, this is like a different type of modeling. I don't, I am not qualified. <laughs> like I can make it through this type of thing. That's kind of where a lot of it ends. It's just like, 
standard, yeah, parametric standard type modeling, drawing solids. I'm I'm there. I can I can make my way through uh, a lot of it with the you know top rated amateurs. Uh, the shift hand holding a cell phone while shifting. <laughs> So the problem is right now is it it's thinking, but it's because there are so there's thousands and thousands of tiny triangles in this file. What I should have done first is uh, reduce the triangle count and get it get it dropped down. That would have been the smart thing to do. Instead, we all get to sit here um, and I act like this is fine. This is fine. We can we can just go back to to this part and I. Are you more proficient in SolidWorks then? Uh, SolidWorks is, you know, or the normal SolidWorks Infusion. I'm very, I'm very uh, similar at, you know, even Fusion. I might, I probably am better at in some ways. Um, but mesh and surface modeling is like a different world. And while both systems can do it, SolidWorks and Fusion, uh, it's just like a whole different way of thinking. Um, it's, it's just, it's a whole different, whole different thing. So, and uh, yeah, that's where it's still just thinking. Uh, I run a Libre. It's basically SolidWorks 2000. I remember a Libre. I've used that as well. Um, that needs Blender. Ah, so. Blender is good at this type of stuff. And I've import a lot of this um, into Blender before. Uh, but the, uh, oh, can someone uh, pin the new code for, or someone give me the, the text for the code from Gunner. And so I can, uh, I'll pin it, I'll replace the why Nicole's out. Um, but, oh, see. Ugh. That is not what I'm after. It uh, it's trying to close off that whole bottom, and I don't like that. So we're not gonna we're not gonna use that one. We're gonna hit cancel on that guy. I'm not even sure why it tried to really do that. I think it was trying to really kind of wrap the whole thing, which in the end wasn't. I don't even know if we have holes in this surface. I think we're in pretty decent shape, surprisingly. Um, so up in the top of the menu bar, there's remesh and reduce. Reduce is what we're going to go after. And I can actually take this down to probably like 10%. So, and you'll see these triangles get much bigger. There you go. So it loses some detail in that. And 10%, like, did we lose too much? Maybe if I hit undo. See, not really though. Like, it's actually still, it's probably fine. You know, like we're scanning a, <laughs> uh, something that was already molded once. It's already kind of, that's actually not that far off from just how it is. So uh, I'm, I'm kind of fine with that. If we just roll that forward again, it didn't really lose much. Um, so why didn't I use Blender again? Because I find it to be just, uh, just uh, too foreign to me. I went through and did a really long, like 13 part tutorial, spent like six plus hours going through it, you know, modeling up a donut. And in the end, I was just like, it's just, I wasn't retaining it. It wasn't the way that I think. And um, I was like, I don't think that it's going to be something I actually use as much. So from here, we still just have kind of this weird, this weird setup. So we can do uh, some cleanup and some conversion. One thing we can do convert. Um, 
we might be able to get away with this. Let's see. We'll do an organic conversion from the, uh, the mesh. We can do high pre-process holes. No, it's okay. It's going to be mad at us for a second again. Let's see what it does. We'll just see. Still a lot of triangles on this. Oh, <laughs> the black, the black side. <laughs> Uh. <laughs> Told you. <laughs> I, I kind of figured that one. So, <laughs> uh, let's see. Okay. I, your computer is weak and you should feel that right after I'm like, it's not, I don't need that crazy of a PC. I know. I'm going to switch to my normal one while I get this restarted. Is this the free version of Fusion 360? No, I pay for the uh, whatever, like I pay for a version of it because I use it for my CNC. Um, and if you use the free version for the CNC, it takes away things like rapid tool moves. And uh, I don't want my CNC to just be moving at the normal cutting speed in between everything. I want it to come up and go fast over and then go back down. So it's, uh, you know, it, it's one of those things. And then I use it so much and I didn't want the like active file limit. So I, uh, I pay for a, a normal version. It's like, I think my subscription just renewed. I think it was like $485 for the year. Um, so it's not, it's not, uh, the cheapest software, but for what it is, it's pretty good. So underside the inside of that scan. See, it all looks pretty good. Pretty uniform. When you take some of that texture off and you just get to see the, the blank version. But, so this is, uh, this is the, the hardest part I think of, so we're going to do a separate so that I can get rid of some of these floaters. That still says it's attached. These little guys, I probably expand this and find, yeah. What was this one? That's that guy. The rest of these can all just get deleted. Break the link would also be fine. Uh, wheeling the proving grounds on beam as we watch <laughs> might be my new favorite. The proving grounds. I'm trying to remember which one. Oh, what is, why did they come back? I'm check what I just did. Oh, maybe I need to do a remove, not a delete. That's what it is. I forget that sometimes. So honestly taking this and trying to get all the way to a solid tonight, probably not the best idea. And I know that you guys hate watching me do CAD, but <laughs> you know, sometimes I just want to like every, every once in a while, like this is a simple project. I can't work on the project that I've been being up until like 2 AM working on every night this week. Um, because I haven't shown all the class one stuff yet. And until I do, I don't want to show it on here. So that's why I'm just like, I better not probably better, better just, uh, work on something else. And this is just, uh, this is just going to be a, a, a simple one. So I'm going to just drag this out so I can create a, Trimming plane. Let's see if I can get some straight line going. 
there's like extra that link was over across the edge. So that's why I'm just doing a, a trim to get that a little cleaner. Looks a little better already. Can you smooth and reshape edges? Um, yes, you can. I mean, you can do, you can do so much if you want to, you know, get in and do, oops. Oh, I was like, what did I just do? I switched files. <laughs> like, like, that's new. <laughs> I've, I've not screwed up this way yet before. But actually, I have many times. So this one, uh, I'm going to plane at an angle. A bit later. Uh, convert it to a solid. Yeah, kind of, except that it doesn't love to just do straight conversions. So you can do convert mesh you can do uh, it's not going to do it in that one. And why is my form menu not on? So if we do form utilities convert, and we go quad mesh to T splines, and it's not going to let us do it on this one. Okay, so it's this weird battle all every time for me to take these things and try and convert them into anything that I can make end up usable. This could crash it again even. It's close. Is it going to happen? What's your bet? Place your bets. Hurry up. Hurry up. Do it quick. Bets are closing in five, four. <laughs> Can we talk about traffic signs now? I did do some traffic engineering this week. I'll tell you that. <laughs> go rise and go. I know. She's just chugging along. Let's see what she's doing. Yeah, see, it's not even working that hard. It's just the program itself. It'll only draw so much. So, like my GPU isn't going, my RAM isn't even hurting. Like I'm, I'm kind of within, <laughs> just the program only wants to try and do so much at a time. It's using a gig of RAM is all. But. We'll just let her do her thing. She might actually make it. We'll see. And probably it probably won't be a worthwhile conversion. I'll have to undo it anyway, but no, it didn't work. It it just aired out, which is a common thing. So we'll go back to surface and we can try the conversion from there, which is Where is it? No, it's not going to let us. It appears your driver needs something. <laughs> so, I mean, we can go on to, we can go on to Thingiverse or whatever and search for all the different types of Colts 3D, find a little like dinosaur head. You can do whatever you want there now. Makes things pretty easy. Let's see if, uh, is it going to let me grab this at all to work with? No. This is like what I'm talking about. When I'm in this world, it just does not parametric. No. So I don't, I'm, oh, I do, I can try to repair. We'll just hit rebuild, preview, see what that does. Sometimes when it's not repaired, I've had issues. Who knows? Taking the CAD class next quarter, for part of my HVAC as AS degree. Good, it's, I mean, it's absolutely worth, yeah. It's trying to take out that whole thing. It's trying to make it a solid. Now I could add that well back in myself, but. Da, 
that's not what I'm trying to do either. Uh, I found a few Pez dispensers that I plan to use for driver's set. I love Pez. The Pez dispensers are great too, but like just Pez. Mm. It's doing an analysis, analyzing, analyzing. Uh, the dead mouse head, yes. Dead, dead mouse, dead mouse five, whatever, whoever you call him, whatever his real name is, I don't know. In the end, I just want this little interior, simple interior. <laughs> is it, I've never, is it supposed to be dead mouse or dead mouse five? Dead Mao, what is it? Like, I've heard it every other way. I always said dead mouse, like a dead mouse. Like, is it just like, it is dead mouse. That's okay, so that's the right way. That's what I thought. It's supposed to be said dead mouse. That's what I thought. And I was like, I don't know. I don't know why it's gotta be, everyone's gotta say it stupid ways. Thank you, Vidjo. Replace pinned, satisfied jerky, hashtag, Foam all the interiors. 10% off satisfied jerky. Last night I was eating some of the uh, Carolina Reaper. And it's so good, but it will absolutely, it just, it melts your face. Uh, I always joke about dead mouth. I, that's what I like. I think people do it as a joke. I'm just like, wait, but is it really? Or is, are you joking because you know and I don't? <laughs> 733T, you mean Leet? Isn't it Leet? Leet speak? The Carolina Reaper is so good. <laughs> 1337. I think that sounds more. Wait, isn't 733T? Wouldn't that be Teet? <laughs> Mm, no, I don't think any of these are going to analyze <laughs> yeet. <laughs> Last attempt at this thing. And then that may be all we do on CAD for tonight. And we'll go back to... <laughs> Are we giving out phone numbers? Buck Dandy, don't you even think about it. Let's see. Uh, I worked security at a Dead Mouse show once. A chick showed me her blooms to get backstage before I could tell her I could not get her backstage. <laughs> hey, you know what? <laughs> you win some, you lose some. Uh, I think you won some, she lost some. You just uh, take the battles as they come. <laughs> Let's see how quick mods can delete your post. <laughs> What's Mike Jones' phone number? Was it 408? Eight, seven. Oh, God, why can I not remember Mike Jones' phone number? <laughs> Something. Three, three, four, eight, seven, seven, four. Oh, God dang it. <laughs> so again, it's trying to, well, I mean, like it almost might make it work, but I would have to edit so much. And you call yourself a rap fan. I know. It's just. Mike Jones, who? Mike Jones. <laughs> Eric, 8004 is the end. Yeah, that sounds right. <laughs> well, I don't know that I'm going to get very far on this tonight. I could, yeah. 
Yes, we could start from scratch and all that. 3308004. I like it. I like where you guys' heads at. Great job. I'm glad that we could share this time together and try and remember cell phone numbers from songs 20 some years ago. How long ago did that song come out? Wasn't I in high school? It was a long time. <laughs> what now? I, while I'm in here, I'm just trying one. Why will it? I'm just, I wish that this would let me. Ugh, it's so freaking frustrating working with surfaces in this program. It just won't happen. That's okay. Work on something easy like a creep cage and interior. <laughs> I haven't scanned those and they're actually... So, if I... Just for any of, anyone who is actually trying to design a roll cage, doing it from a scan and doing the whole thing is actually like, it's a bit of work. So, uh, but how I do it when I do start a cage or if I'm starting a cage from scratch, I'll start with a side profile and I'll, you know, obviously to the, the proper scale and, and whatnot go from there. And then like that will be one sketch. And then I'll start another sketch, like on the bottom, bottom plane like that. And actually it helps if you go to the surface menu up at the top and then go to the sketch menu, the sketching acts different. So as long as you have 3D sketch on the, oh, you can't see that side of my screen, but like on this palette, as long as 3D sketch is selected, then after you start your new sketch, you go grab a line and you can start from different points. And I will do that And I'll do that from all of the, the points on my profile. And that'll just give me a, and like the widths I'll measure from the actual, like I'll know the full width of my cage and I just divide it in half. So say my full cage is, you know, 160, I'll make this 80. That one will be 80. This one up here, the top will have tapered in. So I'll probably be at 70. It's probably maybe a little narrower here. 65, we're back down to 80. Here we're at 80 as well. And then all of these I'll, well, not always, but generally I'll have these be construction lines. And that one should be. So nice thing about do all that. I'll do another one. I'll even select the bottom since I'll be in a 3D sketch. And then it's just connect the dots. And so that fun part, come in, do your radius. Usually I'll do a radius of like a half inch or so, uh, 10 to 13 millimeters. So 3D printed roll cage. Yes, this is like, if I'm doing a 3D printed cage, this is exactly how I'll do it. Um, 13 there. You know, some of them, maybe this one gets bigger. Maybe this one's 20. So you got that. And then you go into create, you go down to pipe, you select it. 3D roll, uh, 3D printed roll cage, five to six millimeters. I'll usually do six. So. And then I've got my roll bar hoop. From there, it's just a bunch of other attachment points. Um, come back in and you can uh, either turn off that body, turn back on that, oops, that first sketch or that last sketch. And then you can go in and just find like node points. You can either go 
you want to make sure that you're on the tube where the tube center line is rather than the previous snap point. So find your tube center point and then drag that back and, you know, say you want it to come to, well, or if you want to triangulate it, go down to the base of this one. And maybe from there, from the door bar, you want to go to the midpoint of, there we go. And maybe you want to do a, you know, sprint car style cage. So you're going to put a, you're going to put your sprint car hoop in. You want to make sure you're on the bar. Now, if you have, you have multiple tubes in there like that. So when you select, you're going to do your first one, right? And that's at six still. That's fine. It's going to turn off that sketch. You got to go turn it back on. So grab a pipe again, that too. Now it wants to cut, but you're just going to do new body. That pipe. Body. Go turn your first guy back on. It's a very strange looking roll cage, I know, but I get the side of it. And it's just a matter of keeping and connecting dots. So another new sketch, you know, you got to turn off stuff constantly, but found that again. Now maybe you want it to have a little bit of taper. So I just connected it to that center. That's fine. Or you, that you can do a couple of things. That's actually maybe a bad example. What you should do, or what I would probably do, is I would go ahead and mirror parts. Like that, mirror it about the center line, hit OK. And then you, again, you just be connecting dots. It can be, it doesn't have to be crazy complicated um, or it can feel mind numbingly boring and everyone else has already left the stream. So, <laughs> so. <laughs> it doesn't have to, it doesn't have to feel like an absolute uh, crazy thing to do, but you can start way simple and end up with something that gives you a, a cage that's like you could come up with a roll cage pretty quickly if you want maybe you just want if you wanted to do something super basic you could i know everybody hates cad so <laughs> yes we don't have to do cat anymore because I dropped my keyboard. Broke it. It's broken. It's spinal. Not so bad. Uh, does what you're doing now work in the free version of Fusion? Oh, absolutely. Nothing I did there was anything beyond the free capabilities of Fusion. Um, any, actually, anything tonight. Nothing I used was... Uh, beyond normal it's uh the things that are like th that the paid version needs is for when doing cnc so like when i'm running my cnc router it takes and it's uh it you know some of the capabilities it you can even run it on a free version but if you just want like some of like the nicer features then you want the paid version tgh thank you sir or gc coop too as well very helpful thanks hey hope hopefully it is helpful and it's not as boring as it can be to most. So I'm hiding CAD. I can't even see anymore. I'm not even tempted to go back in there. I'm always tempted to go in CAD. I love CAD, uh, but it does terrible on the internet. Um, this will be a very poorly watched live stream after the fact. TGH concepts, Heidi Ho from TGH. Super excited for the event. God, I can't say it enough. Matt and I are going to go all out. Have so much fun. How much, how does Fusion 360 compare to SOLIDWORKS? 
I like SolidWorks in a lot of ways, and I like um, and I like Fusion in a lot of ways. Like they have similar, they act similar in many ways, and they have deficiencies in others. I think that um, SolidWorks is definitely the much more enterprise level. Uh, you know, it, it's a, it's a more robust setup at this, at this point, at least, but I will say fusion has come so long, so far, so quickly. Um, so, you know, like SolidWorks is what I draw in at work. Uh, and I don't know that I would want to do the things that I do at work in fusion just because of the catalog of parts and how Autodesk or Fusion specifically handles the catalog with the with how it references things and stuff like that. I don't don't love it. Um, uh, what do you think about online courses to learn CAD? Ab absolutely. I mean, it. I I learned everything through. <laughs> well, I learned most of the stuff I did through like help menu stuff in. Uh, <laughs> in auto like I learned I learned how to do 3D in regular AutoCAD uh, like AutoCAD's been capable of doing 3D stuff for a really long time um, like R14 that was full 3D it just looked 2D and you had to really force it to like go into a 3D style um, and that's where I learned 3D initially and then after that I learned in a certain early year of SolidWorks that I acquired in a way, you know, that many of us did to learn things, but you know, and then uh, now I feel like, like for me to learn CAD when I did, I, I had to be a thief. <laughs> the statute of limitations is up. But, uh, you know, there wasn't anything, there wasn't anything available in a way. Like I learned CAD and stuff like that in a way on my own that when I needed to take it in college, I went in there and I said, I already know, I know everything you're going to try and teach me, uh, in this level of a CAD class. So you can go in there and say, I know this, here's an example of my work. Here's what I do. Here's what blah, blah, blah. Here's what I know. And they say, great, and they charge you half of what the course would normally take, and you get the credits. And you can do that for like a few classes in your college curriculum. So it's like a nice way to not have to do the work in that class period, but they still get paid. It's like a win-win in the weirdest, stupidest way ever. Um, is learning Fusion from Lars legitimate? Super legitimate. Honestly, any way you can learn them is legitimate because... No matter which way you learn, you're probably going to develop your own kind of thinking or style because everybody thinks of things differently, you know, for, um, you know, if, if you take something as simple as trying to draw a phone, you know, like for me, I would draw a rectangle, extrude it down and then radius the corners. But at the same time, you know, a phone really has, uh, you know, it's that would work for an older iPhone, but it, it still has curves around. So you radius the corners and it's like, oh, then I can go radius all the edges around. But there's a lot of ways to do that same thing. Um, you know, in you could think about it in however many different ways. And so breaking down shapes is is something that everyone has to do in their in their their head their own way. Excuse me. Put the hiccups. But yeah. What was first for you, the engineering or the RC stuff? Um, I don't know. Like I learned, I was in engineering school in college, but I hadn't really started any classes that would have like, you know, other than like mechanics and dynamics, statics, uh, you know, like mechanics of elastic bodies and statics 
dynamics, structures, those were classes that I had been taking. They didn't really, and they all apply to engineering. So yeah, it's, and then I was like starting to get into RC. So I just pushed myself like that was what made me want to learn those things is because I was like, Oh, I want to, well, for one, I was like, I want to draw parts cause I can't afford them. So I need to be able to make them myself. <laughs> Have you taken the PE test? Yes, I am a, I am a PE, a reg registered PE in two States, not in California. Um, I'm, I'm technically a PE and a PTOE. So those are the alpha. Those are all the letters behind my name on a business card where applicable. So the physical education, professional engineer, it is a test that I studied for, for like, like five months or so. Uh, and my workshop in Kansas city, the one that was in the basement of the house there where I did all the videos before that I took and I put all the RC stuff away, the tools away. And I had all those big benches that I had built and I, they just, it turned into study area, all my books and manuals and things like that. And you'd go down there and you would do sample tests after sample tests after sample tests. And you, you know, do this, check, see what you did. Cause you had to be able to get enough of the disciplines under control. Like there were specifically disciplines where I was like, I'm not going to focus on that because it's my worst focused area. And I'm not going to waste the time on this eight hour test on trying to stumble my way through that. Instead, I'm just going to try and crush the rest of these areas. So like for me, it was geotechnical. Geotechnical engineering was my worst, worst area. The rest of it, I could, I could crush. So, you know, that I did, that's what I did. And I was able to pass it. Did you get a mechanical engineering degree? No, I have a civil engineering degree. There's a lot of crossover in classes in the early part, but then after that, that's when I went and I did like, you know, traffic design or, you know, traffic engineering, highway design, airport design, uh, wastewater, uh, just sheet flow, water, you know, laminar flow, water classes, uh, so many surveying, what was sur you know, surveying, like you go out there and you surveys that it was actually called, it wasn't called surveying. It's called, uh, geometric control systems. I was like, what the hell is this? And I went in there the first day. I'm like, Oh, we're going to learn how to survey. I'm like, Oh, okay. That's not so bad. <laughs> uh, would it be better to learn CAD on free CAD or a free version of 360, uh, fusion 360 for sure. Um, yeah, absolutely. Try and, you know, like tinker CAD and those things like that. Like I get it. Sketch up even like, I, I know that it's, it's there and it's at, it's accessible. Just go to a good pyramid. Like infusion is, is the way to go. Um, fusion was better than the water talk. Just saying <laughs> in college, we went on field trips to wastewater plants multiple times. How about that? Ugh. <laughs> That's terrible. <laughs> Alex says, best thing to do is to jump in. I assume he's talking about learning CAD and not the wastewater treatment plants. <laughs> Crawler cartel. I work in a wastewater plant. <laughs> I'm not a fan. <laughs> not a fan. <laughs> Was... It was not my favorite treatment. It was not my favorite field trips. <laughs> What's a good free software for beginners? Fusion 360. Absolutely. hundred percent free. You can, and yeah, it will say after a year you need to do it. You need to like, but you can keep redoing it and you can keep getting it for free. Like if you're on the fusion 360, like groups on Facebook every day, it's the same post all the time. My subscription is ending. How do I, or what? It's the same thing. It's the same post every day. There's a, there's an, <laughs> uh, so yeah. <laughs> my, my favorite are the big stir tanks. Uh, what are those? There's the primary, or is it a 
primary clarifiers, secondary clarifiers. I think those are the stir tanks, right? Then there's like the activated sludge area and that's where it's all like bubbling and going. Clarify, yeah, see, I got it right. I remember something. <laughs> Will a Busa motor fit in a DRX4 chassis? <laughs> I miss my Hayabusa. <laughs> Pretty sure I rode my Hayabusa to those field trips. <laughs> That's it. I'm taking my students to a sewage treatment facility. <laughs> the, the blue. I thought those were cheese curd generators. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you paint a beautiful picture, you know. It's a very, it's an interesting world. It's just, it's just not a, you can just really, the, the experience stuck with you for several hours afterwards. <laughs> uh, so anyway, yeah. So, so what's special about the keyboard, about this keyboard? Just a mechanical Logitech wireless. Nothing, nothing special. Not this one, at least. And so, but it's mechanical and, and uh, wireless. So that's a little bit more, a little bit more uh, with a 10 key. So <laughs> that keyboard is weak and you should feel bad. Alex, find me a wireless with 10 key with halfway decent switches. Can't be too clacky for streaming. Although I, I prefer clacky switches, it has to be reasonable. Find, find me one. Let me know. So what's a good, what's a more flexible shock for about more flexible? You mean just like one that will give you more flex? Don't do that. You don't need more flex on a bomber. It's not the way you want to go. Uh, not not editing keyboard. Nope. This is not, this is not a, uh, not what I use for editing. I don't edit in here at all. I film and then I leave I go out there. Uh, the girls in Stuggett, Illinois are loving your stream while sitting on my lap. Hey, are they your dogs or your daughters, your cats? I don't know which one. There's so many, there's so many things that that could be. <laughs> Um, DIY keyboard from Adafruit. I don't need another project. My projects are vast and unfinished. I would be able to type half of what I need to if I did a DIY one. Cause I'd be like, ah, finish that one next week. And then never would. <laughs> James, that's the stream. So I'm just saying like, it could be so many things. <laughs> Not easy to find noisy wireless keyboard. I know that's the thing. What? No 3D printed keyboard? No, thank you. Um, while I like 3D printing in some ways, I, I, I love 3D printing in some ways. I feel like people overuse it way too much. I'm like it's not that great of a solution for things that can be done way better with processes that are already widely available. <laughs> like, unless it's for something that I'm like, I can't get this in a, something that's made nicer and is the right thing. I built this key world. I assembled it anyway. <laughs> Starting every Wednesday live stream with Matt like that. <laughs> what about the laser keyboard that just shines on? I do remember those. I, did those ever like really take or like come to fruition? I remember you set the little thing up and you just, you just what am I drinking? Liquid death. Sparkling water, severed lime flavored, mango chainsaw is my favorite, but uh, harder to find locally. I have to order it from Amazon when I want it. I have one of those. They are hilariously bad. That's what I kind of assumed. It's IPA water. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> do you have a TRX 4M? I do. It's right here. 
TRX Prime. <sighs> a little dusty. Um, you know what Saga, so Illinois is? East St. Louis. Oh, Soche. The Soche Ballet is in, uh, I mean, I've maybe been in the area before. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't know how it was spelled. I was just all, her, we, we always just called them the Soche Ballets. Um, <laughs> cheers, James. <laughs> huh, good times. Uh, uh, let's see. I'd love to see you make a spoof of a What's on the Bench series. <laughs> that would be fun. That would be fun. <laughs> what are my thoughts on the AX24? I, I, it's my favorite 124 scale in all reality. Like, um, the 124 scales are not always my favorite. Um, but this one, out of all of them, is my favorite. This is 118th scale, to clarify. To choose between these two would be much more difficult for me. Uh, is it worth it to get a 3D printer for parts? A thousand percent yes. Um, are you going to try and make a TRX 4000M? Like a, I think it'd be more like a TRX 400M, right? <laughs> Favorite turd is still a turd. <laughs> I mean, I TRX 40. <laughs> Uh, do what's not on the bench. Yeah, just talk about things that didn't get worked on this week. <laughs> Here's trucks I didn't work on this week. That's, <laughs> have you ever had to urge to build one, uh, build one of those completely 3D printed RC trucks? No, no. Uh, like I thought about one of the RC cars, the F, the open F1s. Um, what's on the floor? Yeah. <laughs> but beyond that, no. Uh, 3D printed stuff, again, I think it's, I find it to be only good for things that are just not, like if I can get, like I can get RC cars that are built with chromoly shafts and amazing, you know, hypoid cut gears. Like I want nothing to do with 3D printed ones. <laughs> Uh, yeah. What's not on the bench is what started the eBay sale. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. So anyway, uh, here's a truck. Look at the layer of dust. <laughs> Back on the shelf it goes. Oh, the, so the GTR is 100% done. And if I get any decent weather this weekend, then I'm going to go run it. And since I assume if people are here watching the live stream, they'll probably watch the video. I'll show it to you. So. We, I'd showed you this part pretty much already, but you can see I've got a new front splitter on here, which is a little bit more proud of the body. So it looks like a proper, a proper splitter. Way better. Uh, it's, you know, half inch or so longer than the one that they send with the body. So this is from Stupid RC. Such a dumb name. But I also got their rear wing. And that looks so much better than the Lexan one that Proline has. Uh, like, this is, this is absolutely so much better. Now, it comes with uh, these risers, which go on there to raise it up a decent amount. But it seems like it would be weird because it still has these molded in pieces. So you'd have that molded in part, then this standoff, then the wing. And I was just like, mm, I don't think so. I don't, I don't think so. I don't like that. So instead, I just bolted it right to the body itself and it's done. But see the bottom now, the carbon fiber sides, the titanium skid plates, uh, you know, the front, 
Oh, you can see the titanium splitter bolts. Uh, I got the filler panel in under there. Let's see. You would need to make a riser that also sleeves over the molded risers to hide that. Yeah, it's just like, mm, I don't like it. Uh, I'll take this off. Joe makes you look so much cooler than you actually are. Here. <laughs> Thanks, Wes. <laughs> so with the body off. Now underneath. It looks properly rad. Those carbon fiber sides get it all extended out. The it, big inner fenders get it all nice and oh, just good closed in. Big carbon fiber back brace with the titanium there. It ties into the motor mount with the four screws. So it's all super rigid. And then I designed up a... Uh, nice clamping mount for the GNSS and it you can still see all the status lights it's got a proper window around that and you can still get to the charging point so uh we got all that in there batteries need to be recharged again because they probably self discharge themselves because that's what they do oh I also as part of that GNSS mount I incorporated in a, a wire guide for the battery lead that comes from the ESC so it can still move but it can't fall down or anything like that so it just keeps it all more more settled uh, what's the base vehicle it was uh, in fraction right yes in fraction so These were the old wheels and tires that I burned off and blew holes in. But very dusty somehow. I think it's all tire dust. Yes, from Arma. So it was that. Now, I had to move body posts around and all that. But I always thought this looked good. Like this body, I liked. I thought it was kind of cool. But it's not nearly as cool as the new one. So now I think it's just like, oh, that's it's still kind of cool, but not. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't Moose Jaw crash your other Supra? Yes, Moose Jaw just annihilated that Supra. But it was still worth it. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone in the comments, top speeds. I know, and that's what I'm. That's what I'm going for. See what it can do. But with a stock system, it's not a crazy system in there at all. But uh, I did gear way up, and uh, it's in danger. We're gonna see what it'll do. <laughs> so. <laughs> 90 is what my, I would love to hit 90. We'll see. I doubt it though. What vinyl cutter do you use? I use the, uh, what is it called? Cameo Silhouette 4. Um, and I cut all the graphics for this because Moose Jaw was down here and his vinyl cutter was back at his place in Nevada. So I banged out the stencils with the because uh, this is this is paint. Moose Jaw painted all that. Look at that. That's all paint. Right. Like that's it's so good. You know, G2, all paint. Nismo, that is a sticker. That's from the body kit. But uh Nismo's the only sticker except that little event right there on the side. So um you're going to make Moose Jaw's track look like a fender bender at 90. I know. <laughs> I really hope I don't stuff it underneath of something. <laughs> Where are you going to run the Skyline at? I'm thinking of a place to run my Limitless. I just want to go 100 miles an hour. That's all. I don't actually know. I have not decided that either. Um, 
but because I have a limit list somewhere. Where did my limit list go? I have a limit list somewhere, and it's got an XLX2 in it with uh, um, a TP power motor. So, and it should be capable of like 135, 140 range with the setup that I bought, uh, but I've just never ran it. Go to an unused airport runway if possible. Not possible. There is none available. Um, it was in the box you sent me. <laughs> Nicole sold the limitless. Like, what the hell is this big blue thing? It's so dusty. Sold. But yeah, this thing, this thing just looks really good. Pull back there. They did, they've got these, uh, like the, the GTR on the wing and Skyline on this side. And I think this is laser cut, like acrylic or something like that. Um, and then it's it's just stuck down on there. It's like, yeah, it's kind of cool. I assume that it will come off. Um, sack raceway drag. And uh, I know a few people that might, that may work. I mean, if they'll let us, it's uh, that would be, that'd be great. I just don't know that that will be. <laughs> that that will happen. We got lucky during COVID. Newly built, unopened Menards, freshly paved parking lot. So yeah, like there's a couple of play like where I went to do the Phoenix speed runs. I just don't think it's it's not nearly long enough because it's only like 600 feet or so, um, and I think I probably need closer to that thousand, twelve hundred feet range. So. You know, I'm doing something very similar with a Vendetta and a Nissan Z body. Oh, the Z bodies did look good. I like those as well. Um, I love this one seven scale. I think it's just pretty freaking awesome. So I've got to film this this weekend, the bench stuff at the very least. And then um, the running is next. I also put a ton of titanium, other parts in there, steering parts and all that. Uh, it went super well, but. I don't know. Excited to see what it does. How can you live a life a quarter mile at a time in 600 feet? You got to turn around and come back the other way. And then, you know, it's still the same, but it just takes a little longer. <laughs> uh, will radio range come into effect with your speed crashes? Maybe. Who knows? Only one way to find out, though. Um, didn't you learn how to lay asphalt in college? We didn't. <laughs> so, I just wish they made a Yaris body for that car. The thing is, is if they did, it'd be like this tall because those Yaris are so short. The tires would look so like, you need like some donk wheels for it to make it look right. But yeah, I'm pretty stoked for this thing. I think it just, it worked. Mm -hmm. It worked really well. It just all around came out perfect. Ugh. Crashed. Crashed already. Please take pictures before, not after. <laughs> really need to like, yeah, spend some time, do all the B-roll first, just all of it. And then just pray. Just pray. Yeah. Uh, maybe a flying field with a good runway. Flying fields actually don't have long. Their runways are all really short because I've got good flying fields around me, but their runways in general are wild short. Uh, indoor cycling track. For one, those places are going to be like, no, you can't bring your RC car in here. And I don't know that any of those exist. Um, uh, Leaf blowers and cleaning the lot at full sun. That's my thought, Joe. I just don't know if 600 feet's not enough. It might be. Where, oh. It might be like the first place I go to try. So, um, remember the velodrome races? Like, I remember some of them, but I, I think there were still some in SoCal, but it's about all I can think. So, um, 
<laughs> doing our RC takeover at a busy intersection, like all the cool kids. They call those sideshows, and they're very popular around these parts. Um, donk build for the comp. Oh, I'm, I'm so in for, I want to do a proper donk build, but I need someone else to do the body the get it detailed and all that. And I'll build a chassis for it. I want to do a proper like drop front end rear is easy, solid axle rear, you know, so have Nicole drive and follow it down the highway. No. She would forget what we were doing and then just no. <laughs> Drive to Colorado and take it to the salt fly. I mean, I'm a trip to Salt Lake in general I could do just separately. But at the same time, the class one build, while I did call that call, text Matt on my way home today, because like I just nonstop keep thinking about class one and how we're going to do everything and where some of the areas that I've been struggling with certain parts of, uh, the mold making of the design. And, uh, I was just like, Hey, what if we do this? And he was like, is it because it will make it easier? I was like, yes. He's like, absolutely. Let's go for it. Like, okay. That could make things considerably faster, both for the design and for our own construction. Because, I mean, the construction of this is going to be so much more difficult than uh, the construction of my class one last year. I say that, but last year it was... Actually, last year would probably be more difficult in some ways, just because I had no idea what I was doing at all. Everything was a gamble. Everything was a guess. This year, at least, I know like what worked for me and which ways worked even better and to do those again. So in some ways, I think I'm ahead from last year, but not always. Some of the stuff has been... Uh, is is going to be a lot more bold of a decision to try so that's uh that's gonna be that we'll see <laughs> uh yeah yeah that's chief out there doing who knows what what <laughs> i can't comment anymore i do a private day. <laughs> james is living the life <laughs> You know what? I'm watching this RC. Okay. Let's, let's turn off the RC show for a minute. <laughs> That's amazing. That's, that is a life goal right there. Have an AirPod in. <laughs> wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. That's a new meaning. Not a bad way to end my birthday for the day. Thanks for joining. How's the drift scene out there? Um, I think it is pretty decent. I know that I think there's a a place out here that has a an indoor track set up that has meets on like Wednesdays or something like that. Um, but it's not something that I think has ever like interested me enough to keep pursuing. Phoenix, thanks for all your help. Good night. Um, so, you know, it's, uh, like I have a drift car up there still. I've got my MST and I still just like, uh, I'm, I don't have any interest in taking it, you know, like taking a night and going down there and all that. So it's just not my thing. Um, want a good place to run you for like, do you mean what's a good place or do I want a good place? Um, clarify, please. Uh, oh, what's a good place? That's what I thought. Uh, I don't know if you're in my, in the Sacramento area or not. The only place that we have that's actively racing U4 right now is Rescue Raceway. So 
that's the uh, that's the only one around here. SoCal has got a more active scene. I don't know their actual locations or what like the best group is to join to get that information, but that's uh, kind of one of those. Ironically, in a drift group chat about upcoming car shows where we might demo our drift car. I mean, when we went down to SoCal before the NURSA event, it was NURSA, I think, um, went down there and we went to Super G. And, I mean, I had, we went there two nights in a row because it was, it's insanely impressive to watch all of them and how freaking talented so many of those drivers are. Um, so like, and that's, I wouldn't say that's why I don't want to do it because of how good they are, but they let, uh, you know, I got the chance to drive a couple of cars and I just, either way, like you can give me the best setup car there was there that perfectly fit my driving style. And it's, it's not going to be me. It's just, I'm not going to, I don't have that skill set. And the, the drive to practice that skill set, I also don't have. So, let's stare at the Woods Runner some more. Um, I actually, so we had. I had shown the design work on like the floor that I had been working on for this. And I've got a couple of those parts. Um, I, I'm actually going to change the design a little bit so that I can incorporate the um, side portions, which are also going to have the tail light buckets in them. But the, uh, so I got to make some changes there, get that a hundred percent. But once that's done, that'll be great the uh but i worked out where i'm going to get all that stuff printed see how that works out see how that looks because that could really help make this thing just even better because i'm going to have while this is 3d printed now and it, the 3d print quality is good the Prusa does a great job you know um but in the end even a great job is a great FDM 3D print still looks like a really good FDM 3D print. So uh, that's I'm going to have it all printed by SLS because that will be just a much smoother, just better all around looking print. So that's going to be that's going to be plenty. Hey, what's going on, Logan? Do you have a seat that will work in the use with the UC fab? Uh, I mean, I definitely have a seat file. If uh, I would just need to scale it. Oops. Like this seat's too big, well, kind of. So, I mean, actually it's not really that much too big. It's a hair, it's a hair big because these are super tiny cars, but that would probably be just the seat needs to end a little bit further back. I'd have to look at the photos exactly, but um, I probably need to scale this down about 30%. Um, that's the Prusa Mint. No, that's the regular Prusa, not the Mini. Um, do you print those vertically? Yes, for the most part, those were printed vertically. I've referenced part of the interior of Dave Wong's car. If you want to see how the real one fit. Yeah, that's fine. Send it over. Uh, send it over. I mean, I, I also have video of Cody's as well and a couple of others. But yeah, send me over a couple of good photos and I can... I have this whole cage in CAD. So I can scale it till it fits quite well. Um, yeah, just let me know, Logan. The orange Crocs tonight? Nope. I have no shoes on. 
not snowshoes, no shoes. What shocks are those? Uh, these are the Incision SADs, but with no springs on them. So they look like a air shock. And I'll probably do an internal spring just because, even though that's not what I like, would rather run for performance uh, for the look of a, a moon buggy like this. It is what I want to, it is probably what I want to do, but I still might change some things up on here as far as what I want to run. I may run, I may switch over to F10 portals rather than the F9 portals for the offset pumpkin. And I'll do a servo that mounts behind the axle down low. So I want to keep with this width. I think that it, it keeps it in check being the most, uh, most reasonable for the scale, but I just need to get some of that done, which has not been a top priority. This, like I, you know, this, I've had this one around for a while and I just work on it as I go. Hey Josh, can you show your military wheel and tire setup you have? I think you said it was on the power wagon. Um, uh, I don't have my power wagon here, but I have the other one. This is the one I would say is my most military-esque. And this is the... Uh, which one are these? Are these the, these aren't the Roswells. These are the Panzers. Uh, and I don't have all the screws in the rear, but the front, it's the Panzer. And then this is the Grunt. Is that what it's called? Yeah. So. So that's the, uh, that's that setup. And the other one that I was talking to you about was the Roswell's with, and then with these tires would look good. Um, has VP experimented with different types of metals for axles? Uh, I mean, yeah, we've, you, we could cut different types, but you know, the difference between advertised imported uh, metals and their strengths and things like that. And just, we use domestic, material that of a certain quality and there's there's not going to be a an area where i think that ours is going to be a disadvantage at all uh time to make five more sets of cuts and shots for the next two days <laughs> Ugh, i mean it sounds fun and all but what's the advantage of cut and shuts oh uh Generally, it's because you're taking and you're using a narrower tread width tire so it doesn't get so wide as like the other ones. And often you're able to make a 5.25 inch tall tire rather than a 475 or a 5.75. So you can make this in between size. Uh, your sidewall height doesn't get too crazy. Um, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, that's the. Uh, Interesting, interesting uh, parts of the whole idea. Off the top of your head, how many components do you need to undo on a Phoenix to change opinion? Um, well, if you just take off the, was that three, four, five, six, six screws, you can basically just pull the transmission up. Um, and I mean, I guess if you have dig linkage, you'd take off those two, you know, dig and overdrive, eight screws at the max. That's, you know, you don't really probably need to remove the whole motor and everything. You just kind of move it over, do it with it there. That's how I would do it. Um, Thought that said crotch. <laughs> yeah. Freaking Joe. <laughs> Ridiculous. Oh my God. 
this thing needs some shocks in a bad way. These are just stock raw builders kit shocks. And they just, <laughs> they, they don't want to do anything. I'm pretty sure they don't have any oil in it. I just didn't want them just, since I wasn't going to drive it yet, I didn't want them to just link. <laughs> Will Vanquish do a Trucks of Fortune in July? I don't know. I always joked about it just because I kept screwing up and calling it Trucks of Freedom rather than Trucks of Fortune. I was actually calling it Wheels of Freedom rather than Wheels of Fortune. Um, and that was the problem for the most part. So I was just joked. I'm like, I'm just going to do it. We're going to do it again in July because I keep screwing up the name. But I don't know. I... <laughs> Really depends. I don't want to do it in July just because it's going to be so freaking hot to pack all that stuff. But bam, suck RC. Thanks, sir. Just smoked that 8.40 I was messaging you about. Oh, that sucks. Smoking servos. Uh, we've all we've all been there. Yeah, I mean, if you've never smoked a servo, I don't know. I'm just it's a rite of passage. Especially mini servos back in the day. Ugh. It's all the time. The smoke out the side. Just burn a hole right through the side of them. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> Too awkward to get into the fight. I see what you did there. Uh, does shearing the splines off the servo horn of my super rock ray count? Yeah, you know, breaking servos, melting servos, it's all, it all feels like in the same, same line. Um, didn't even get on the ground yet. You know what, that's, I would say that's when servos smoke about 60% of the time. Never been used, still getting set up, just <laughs> Uh, Nothing beats smoking an ESC when you cross your leads. I did that recently by accident on a Kyosho ESC. Um, and I can't remember how I did it. I don't, I think it was like just the battery type that I was, I just touched it the wrong way and went, pop, and I went, yep, that's done plugged in nothing I was like sweet I got six minutes of runtime out of that before I had to change it over um yeah is that rig gonna get some beefy sliders it needs to get an interior first then yeah it needs sliders really I just need to get it finished get the bed in there get it maybe it, uh honestly I just need to get it finished like, you know, <laughs> I don't know why. I just, I, I like the build. I think it's a cool truck overall. It just, like, I just need to push through on that last part. Like, I need that motivation to work on it to just get it done. So, yeah. that I don't know. I don't know why I can't. I just can't. I have not been able to to focus on it, but you know, if there's just a few things that I don't know, a few little things about it that I just like, if I feel like it just needs this or this or a little change here, but if I change that, it's gonna mess with this, and then it's all screwy, and I, it just keeps kind of fighting me. What's the wheelbase? Uh, it's got to be like. 15 and a half. Oh, wow. 15 and three, three eighths. Yeah, I was real close. Where's the interior? I have the interior. One of the very few that I think ever got made. They, uh, they sent me the one, like one of the prototypes of the six by six Unimog interior. And then they discontinued everything. And I don't know that it ever got real, like how much many of them ever got released, but it wasn't many. Um, will the CENF 450 body fit the 250? I think so. Yes. You have plenty of night the next, the next few months to finish all your rigs. <laughs> 
You don't have a yardstick for measuring a right mat and his uh, and then go this way and then go this way. What a nerd. Uh, they're the same cab, aren't they? Nope. The six by six was the four door. The regular was a two door. Different cabs. Um, I've got one. Got it from Amy. Yep. Okay. I, I remember they did make some. They just did not make many. Uh, a meter stick. That is true. It was not a yard stick. I think it was a combo yard meter stick. <laughs> no. Oh, the CENs. Uh, that sounds, that sounds right. Make an internal cage that connects to that, to the external cage. I could I just, you know, it's such a, it's a body that there just does. There's not enough that exists. Like, do I need to, is it worth it? We'll see. I, I need to have more, more easily attainable goals on this truck. Otherwise I'll never finish it and I'll just sell it. And then that will be such a waste. And so, uh, exo cage, absolutely not ever. I hate exo cages. I'm so not a fan. That's I absolutely, I despise them. Just say it. Personal preference thing, but. Yeah. I'll still buy it. Let me, oh, I know I could sell it. I know people who like that would like to buy it. For one, it would not be reasonably priced. It would be stupid. But I don't know. I just, I need, I should finish it because it is cool. It will be. It still is. Whatever you want to say. Um, Put it on eBay. No, because then I'll lose the truck and won't get any money like the rest. <laughs> or like the one. Um, you're saying a clapped out XJ with an XO cage looks bad? Hard yes. Absolutely hard yes. <laughs> Would be fun to build a dual skid long wheelbase truck where the links are short and the drive line basically has a carry bearing to the rear. We had a couple of trucks, like back in the day when it was like a little bit before MOA or like when MOA was at start. We did the that type of thing. Well, this has a carrier bearing. Lady. This is a, I designed, see, long wheelbase. This back here, carrier bearing goes to well, it's got an intermediate shaft that goes right there. And then there's the rear drive shaft. There you go. It's basically what you're saying. I mean, that makes the links reasonably short on this versus stupid long. Um, but yeah, that's why I, why I did it. Also, if you tried to make the links this long, you would lose so much triangulation that that whole rear axle would be so floppy. Um, yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's all. Carrier bearings are fun. What's the base on that? Go on, get rid. Uh, it's a VS410 Pro. So the it was this is the VS410 Pro body, but it's been narrowed right down the center. I think it was narrowed an inch or so, somewhere around that. Um, Maybe a little less. I can't remember. Three quarters of an inch. Rear bedsides were cut and shortened just a hair and pinched. So, but the chassis, the transmission, the axles, everything else is bone stock VS410 Pro. Which is like my favorite truck anyway. So, uh, did it split in the front? Uh, so when it was cut in half all the way down, the bottom part was just never connected right there. There'll be a grill that goes over this and, uh, I'll take the original file for the grill and put that there. 
That will be a cool build for eBay 2023. Not a chance. Not a chance at all. I'll tell you that. For one, that it would be like a pickup only. Cash only pickup. Because it would be a lot. And yeah. Uh, do you like the deadbolt bodies since they're kind of similar to the pro ultra body? Pro and Ultra Bodies are kind of Scout-based, Scout 800-ish. The Deadbolt is early Bronco. Um, that's what it like. That's what it was based off of. It was designed by Matt Carney, who is an early Bronco person. Um, so they are similar, but not the same. But I do like the Deadbolt in its own end. This was Alex's Deadbolt. That I ended up with. But big difference between. Uh, and Broncos were based on Scout 8, 80s. Well that, that is true. That The Bronco was made to fight the, the international options. The biggest difference between Scouts and, and Broncos. Is Broncos have the raised character line. Of the Fenders. Versus the rounded of the Scouts. So. Um, yeah. But. You know, they're both based on their modernized versions of older vehicles. So for that reason, yeah. No. Let's see. Uh, who's my favorite KOH this year? I think Shearer gets it. He, I mean, he's always a good bet. Um, but I feel like a UFO rig is going to get it again. Those UFO rigs are, they're throwing so much tech and advancement at them. Now, the, the guy who's building, who built Shear's new rig. So Shear's racing a brand new car this year. So that's like another, he had it, and it only is like just finished. So he doesn't have the time in it that he had in his last car. It's a shakedown year for it. Who knows what could happen? I don't know. That's always the hard part with new cars. You know, Lauren Healy, I feel like if he could keep a car together for more than the first lap, he would be a winner for sure. His cars are amazing, but like he goes there in a new car and he gets 16 miles in and explodes something. I don't know. Yeah, that's the... That's so tough to think about. So, uh, out of all real four by fours, what is your favorite like one to one scale? Um, I don't know if I have a favorite. Not a big fav favorite person, you know. Old school Scout eight hundreds are kind of one of my favorite. That's why. I pushed a lot for the idea, like being able to use that style in the VS410 bodies originally. Um, Cause they're just, I really, really like them. Make a 110 fan car like that one that set the record. We've talked about that. Matt and I did talk about that. It would be fun. And then sloths and passing everyone in his rusty old bomber. <laughs> There's trusty old bar. Same, 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 same. Yeah. That the fact that Randy, you know, his cars are dirt simple. They're not that fast in the desert. They're just fast enough. Um, but they're just dead reliable in the rocks and he knows that car and he can just drive. So, uh, do you like any of the one-to-one -one rock bouncer stuff? I've been to some of the SRS events when I lived back in Missouri. There was SRS events that happened near me. So it'd be a couple hour drive. We'd go watch the events, you know, see the hill killing. Um, and I always enjoyed it. I thought it was fun. I, I still like watching some of the Rock Bouncer stuff on YouTube. Uh, I don't watch it as much now as I did back, you know, but I still like a Mad Ram video. You know, you can't be into off road and not think it's still cool i mean they're while it's not a type of rig i ever like want to own myself you know or it wouldn't be the the first choice i would want to own but to see a you know 
1500 horsepower supercharge a big block take you know 43s and just put it on the chip and you know work its way up a a gully like it's freaking rad you know so yeah like you know <laughs> Uh, yeah. I heard you and Matt were going to do track dancing riders for your C1 this year. God. Uh, was there ever discussion of EV prior to the cab and half cab bodies being used to actually license an international scout body or would retail cost? Uh, great. I mean, there's always things like that. But also, if you do certain things, then you, you know, depending on the light, who owns licensing and all that it can change greatly. There's also a big difference because a lot of times licensing costs are based on the retail value of something. So um, I'll use just generic numbers that aren't necessarily typical numbers for the industry, but just a number. So if you've got a, a RC car that retails for $300, um, the licensing fee may be 10% of the retail cost retail value. So $30 of it could go to the licensing company. Um, because say you license a Jeep, you don't send Jeep a check. Jeep subcontracts licensing agreements to a f licensing firm and they handle licensing. So they handle protecting the licensing. So if like there's litigation, like the whole FMS thing, that's not likely coming from some guy who sits in a building that says Jeep on the front of it. It's coming from some licensing company somewhere. And they're like, we are in charge of charging for the licensing. We're in charge of protecting the licensing. So when these things pop up, they go after them. But now you take that, you know, that one car was $300 and it's $30. Now you go and you make a $900 car. Well, that licensing now became, you know, $90. So all of a sudden that's a big chunk that gets, that has to go. And just because it's something costs $900 doesn't mean that there's just three times more profit there. It just doesn't always work that way. So it's, uh, you know, consumerism is weird. There's all kinds of things. Um, but when you make things that do end up costing a lot, it can be whatever. So, um, I'm going to skip anything that says to make a Land Rover because... No. <laughs> um, yeah. How does one go about finding out who to contact for said license? Um, you don't contact them, they contact you. No, I'm kidding. Um, it depends. Depends on the companies and things like that. Um, but I will say that generally it's a, um, it's a difficult process depending on the types of companies. You know, some are very stringent, some are not. Um, but if you're going at big companies, they're going to, you're going to need to put up some of these kind of like some companies have like guaranteed, like you're get, you have to sell. Uh, and these are just ones that I've like been aware of. Like you have to sell 10,000 units. Like that's the guaranteed minimum. Like you're going to sell at least 10,000 on that. And you're going to give us at least 10% of the retail of each one. So therefore you owe us a hundred thousand dollars as a minimum. If you only end up selling 5,000 of them, well, you still owe us a hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> like it just is what it is. And then if you end up selling more, you still have to pay that too. <laughs> there's some, there's some interesting ones. I've heard of some stories of ones that were just like, Oh dang, <laughs> that's wild. But yeah. Um, when you talked about RTRs for this year, I was hoping to see some more 2.2 rigs. I have a bomber and just want another 2.2 other than a rift. That's a great question. It's just like, will, I don't know, like are 2.2s going to catch on again or not? I don't know. 
Like, I feel like the Rift has done okay, but it hasn't killed it. You know, it's not, it hasn't exploded in popularity. So, it, it's, it's weird, right? I don't know. I don't know if they're, if they will or not. Like, will the market dive back in on tutus? It's hard to say. I know some people say they want them. You know, some people say they want two two wheels and things like that. Like, one nines are clearly the more popular. Like, clearly. I've never even seen a Rift in the wild. That's uh, never owned or even driven a 2.2. The Rift was kind of specific. Yeah, it is kind of. Um, yeah, Rift was more basher. Yeah, I agree with that as well. I mean, it was wild fast, had, you know, open diffs, open center diff. Um, so yeah, it is a, it, it's weird, you know. You think Axie will bring back the XR10? No, I don't. Uh, I have some girls associate that are ready to run. <laughs> Dale, I could be talked into that, maybe. <laughs> A little more Wreckfest action tonight. Hmm. I, it's a possibility. Last last weekend, we ended up staying... There was like... Moose Jaw jumped in there. We ended up playing freaking video games till 3 a.m. It's like, this is ridiculous. Let me get some coffee brewing. <laughs> so the bomber... So the bomber was an RC as well as the low C laser nut. Uh, what other U4 car could you see becoming an RC? Ah, I see. I was like, what do you mean it was an RC? The bomber was real. So was the low C laser nut. What other U4 car could you see? So it's a great question because like, if you look at, um, oh yeah. And playing video games, we were just in there and all of a sudden we saw someone driving. I was like, I think that's Dawson playing in this same random server. I messaged him. Um, do I have a discord? No, I don't have a discord, but SBG does. And we used his lounge as our like chat. Um, I can't stay up till three. <laughs> um, hammer Ray is real, right? Yep. That's Casey Curry's trophy Jeep. God, you know, it's just like, there's rad ultra four cars, but it's like, you know, the laser nut is four wheel independent. So they were able to just take a tenacity, throw it on there. Done. Um, the, what, what were the other, the, the rays, the hammer ray is a stretch chassis of the rock ray from before. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, you know, it, it, Campbell car is a great choice for sure. I am going to disagree with you, Logan, but not, and not because I don't love the Campbell car. I do like the Campbell car a lot. It's always been like a favorite even, but outside looking in, it is an ugly car. It is not, if you walk in, you don't know anything about it. You see that thing. You're like, that is a really ugly looking thing. You have to like know it and appreciate it and understand like the Campbell's way of how they got to where it is. Cause it's pretty free. <laughs> it's kind of ugly. <laughs> how dare you, sir? Hey, I love it, but it's because I know how it got there. Not because I'm just looking at it. I'm like, that's the one. <laughs> You know, I just mass production car wise. I would, if I'm in a, in a, the big conference table room, uh, I'm not raising my hand on the, I vote for that one. Uh, Campbell's new two seat car. Isn't quite as ugly it, kind of because it's skinned a little bit, you know, it kind of makes it look like a puffer fish. It's a little bit, um, you know, it's, yeah, trust me, I love them. I've 
the way that they're built. I've climbed all over and around and inside of those cars. Uh, you know, we went down and, and saw them in Arizona in like 20, 2021, I think it was. Might have even been the end of 2020. I can't remember. But went in and visited a friend. A friend of ours ended up marrying Shannon's daughter, um, Brian. So we went down and like visited visited them and climbed around his car and uh, Bailey's car and just, yeah. What do I think the best looking U4 car is? I'm going to say Lauren Healy's. Um, Cause skinned with the Bronco body in the way that it was done, it like looks the most factory style. Um, Gatekeeper is a Trent Fab. Absolutely. Yeah. Gatekeeper is clearly a Trent Fab car. Um, the Wraith was, the Wraith was the Wraith. There was a full size vehicle and they just scaled down and made that one. The first Wraith came with the Samurai hood that the full size one was based on. Um, and then later they made it look like the poison spider Jeep, but still with the ugly kind of wraith cage on it. Um, Miller chassis is always killer looking. I'm just not a Jeep guy. The Miller chassis is great. And it's based, <laughs> it's the Miller chassis is based off of the original uh, Jason Pauly chassis, which is the name Twisted Customs. Um, the first car that Eric Miller won King of the Hammers in was his Twisted Customs buggy. And then he made the Pro Chassis, the Miller Motorsports Pro Chassis, that was like a beefed up, modernized version of the Twisted Custom Chassis. And the Twisted Custom Chassis, the Eric Miller build, whatever, that is what the Ripper was based on. It was the Twisted Customs. That's like my files at work for the chassis you're in a twisted customs folder. Like that's what I was drawing. I was going to hand make a cage that was twisted custom style. So like Jason Pauly does freaking gorgeous work. It's just so cool. But he built, he didn't really build race cars. He built like really badass trail rigs and shit like that. It's a, and then Eric Miller like just forced it into a way to make it to make it go, you know. Um, point one's new 911 car looks cool too. It does look cool. It, it's a, it's pretty interesting. What is a Capra based on? The cap, the Capra uh, was designed by Matt Carney as well, who was the designer of the original Wraith, one of the original guys who started Axial. Um, and the Capra was going to be called the Wraith Two initially. Um, and the, the original, there was a full size buggy called the Wraith two, but with what they wanted to achieve on the Wraith two platform, they ended up modifying the cage a bunch until it took this like really like sexy looking Wraith two buggy. And it became that like awkwardly long nosed thing that a capper is. I think cappers are terribly ugly. I like driving them, but I think they're hideous. Like, I think the nose on a Capra just looks like a, just looks awful. Like, it's one of my least favorite, <laughs> you know, uh, most least favorite would be the G made R one chassis. I think that thing looks completely ridiculous. <laughs> Capra, probably a close second. Maybe the, uh, yeah, I think I like the Capra le less than the Wraith. Cause you can mod the Wraith in a way to make it look pretty decent, but, <laughs> but yeah, the actual Wraith two that it was supposed to be by, um, does the Asian guy from Folsom work for Vanquish? Yes, he does. <laughs> His name is Michael. He sits right next to me all day and we harass each other nonstop. I had to, when we had a, a change up and I needed to like take on a different kind of a different position in a way I had to bring Michael in cause he was working for us doing, um, <clears throat> like customer service and shipping stuff basically. But then I needed him to like take over as a, 
kind of like a manager in total uh, because I had to take on some extra stuff that I needed to focus on. And he does, he does a great job. Hates the capper, but loves the UTB. I like what they do. I like the point of them and what they offer. I can get over the styling of some of it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, want to take him out to the U4 course? <laughs> Michael's always up for the U4 course. He is a hell of a driver. Um, but no, uh, I got the six year old and myself KOH RR 10s. Ah, nice. Yeah. Um, you know, they're fun cars. They take a little bit to be like regular U4 ready to go, but yes, I know exactly what you mean. I knew I recognized in a video about my first Vanquish part, uh, from him, a centered rock jog Ray three axle a minute ago then, huh? What are must upgrades for the Phoenix? Hmm, must upgrades. Uh, personally, it's a little bit of weight up front. Get some, put some bead locks, some, or some, you know, aluminum wheels and bead locks and like a brake weight up front. And then like from there, that's like, that's the only thing I'm like, you need to do that. You should, you should do that ASAP. From there, it's just based on driving style and what you pref prefer. Man. So, 841, but my voice is going quickly. Um, <clears throat> brass knuckles are the best first upgrade. If you have the VS410 portal, then the brass knuckles are a great one. Um, if you have the straight axle, you can use anything that's an uh, SCX102 brass front knuckle for the most part, all works. Um, but you can just do a brake weight wheels or some sort of, you know, weight in the wheels as well. I do like to keep it closer, but a couple of decent, decent ways to handle it. <clears throat> I don't know if my voice will be able to go much longer without just constantly clearing my throat. So we'll go, uh, let's go a few more minutes here and I still need to eat dinner and work out before I can play video games with my friends. <laughs> so yeah, I've got to, I've got to do at least 20 minutes on the bike. Can't miss. Haven't missed a day. Haven't missed. We're, I'm like almost 30 days in. So I'm not, not bailing on a day now. <clears throat> All that flaming starch spray you inhaled. That's probably right. <clears throat> Dang it. You mentioned Haha ha Tonka in another stream. Uh, where's your favorite spot go uh, going there in a couple weeks? My favorite uh, favorite at Haha ha Tonka is the quarry trail. It's a super easy, just nice, fun trail. And the actual quarry part's pretty cool. I go past the castle, down, and then work my way back by the carriage house. Um, but also the natural bridge, um, is a great, great area as well. Uh, it's a cool, this is just a cool area. It can be a little hard to find like technical crawling spots, but super fun, um, super fun place to just kind of trail around and enjoy it. It's such a pretty area. Um, Ha, ha Tonka, for those that don't know, it's in the, uh, it's near the Lake of the Ozarks in Missouri. So Lynn Creek type area, Camdenton, I think more technically, um, super cool. Old castle was built in like the 19 teens, maybe something like that it has a crazy history of like, they built it, it burned, they rebuilt it, it burned again. And they maybe tried once more and didn't and maybe the original builder of the castle of Haha ha Tonka died in like the, it was like the night teen teens or something like that in a two car automobile accident. Like <laughs> there was barely two cars on the road when it happened is the crazy thing. <laughs> it was pretty nuts. So, uh, my house was built in 1904. David, that's pretty crazy. This is a, this is a cool one. It's like a limestone castle. Um, so yeah. 
if you're ever in the area. It's an easy, easy, quick walk up to see the castle. It's got an amazing view of the uh, Lake of the Ozarks. So absolutely, absolutely worth it. Uh, I don't really game, but I want to try BeamNG. Any tips uh, how to get going? It's really just, it's, it's crazy to just start, just pick cars and drive around and crash into stuff. <laughs> Texting and driving don't mix. Telegraphing and driving don't mix. Um, have you been to the talking caverns? No, I have not. I have not done, oh, use a controller for sure. Yes, if you're playing BMG, use an Xbox controller. You just plug it in with the USB, super simple. Uh, how did you make your VS410 tires look wide? The one that came with the Phoenix looks skinny. Uh, they're just different tires. These are the Falcons. So they're just, these are the uh, Falcon Wild Peaks. They're a little bit wider, but I don't like a super wide tire. These aren't that wide, like compared to a high racks or anything like that. Um, and the original VXT ones, we, Brandon and I both just don't really love super wide tires. and. So we kind of liked that size shape of the VXT. Um, a little bit more squared off would have been good. And then they were just too thick. So the comp, it, so they were just a little too stiff, but still fun. Anyway, my voice is gone. So with that being said, I'm going to end this. Uh, I'm going to eat. I'm going to work out quick. And then back to, back to work, back to video gaming. I don't know yet. We'll see. Anyway. With that, thanks everybody for joining. Um, yeah, hope you all have a good weekend, good night, whatnot. It's gonna be a busy week next week. Scale news, hopefully Monday GTR video, Tuesday scale news, Wednesday road to the Rockies. Um, Thursday I have a video as well, it should be four videos at least next week. Maybe next week, I don't think I can do Friday Night Live. I might do a Thursday Night Live just because of it. I could have another video even. Crazy, crazy. Anyway, all right, that's it. I'm out of here, I gotta work out. Bye.